how do you actually imagine that political and diplomatic pressure on Russia? So it's like um, with our partners, with the EU members, finding a mediator potentially. Um... That's uh, that's a very complicated thing because Russia is Russia. It's illegally, but uh, cons- uh, constant member of Security Council of mm-hmm. United Nations. It's a uh, very big player in energy market of the world. It's nuclear state. It's very big player of food market uh, and so on. Uh, so it's a problem, but still it can be done. More sanctions, more pressure, and one day, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the day after tomorrow, but some day will come when for Russia it will be a preferable option mm-hmm. to get out of this uh, trap uh, and uh, and to leave Ukrainian territories. But this will never happen in current situation when Russia is uh, in reality Uh, supported by China. Mm -hmm. Uh, This will probably never happen. Still, Russia has this backing of China and a strong Chinese back Mm -hmm. and um, and support. Probably, probably. Um, Yeah. News has been circulating in the Ukrainian media as well about potential negotiations between the Ukrainian side and the Russian side. There has been also different sorts of information that potentially Russia, Russia's representative will be invited to the second peace summit, which is allegedly going to take place this autumn already before the presidential election in the U.S. So what's your take on that? Do you believe that such negotiations are possible? And how so? Because there is Putin who says that President Zelensky is not legitimate president. We do not recognize Putin as a legitimate president in Russia because of the falsifications in the election. So how do you imagine this kind of negotiations, if they are actually feasible, could they actually be be done, conducted this year already? No, I don't believe in this. Uh, f- the problems about legitimacy, not legitimacy, uh, definitely President Zelensky is legitimate. It's a false accusations. Uh, Putin is a tyrant, but it doesn't, yeah, he's a tyrant, but the world, unfortunately, has a lot of tradition to deal, to, for dealing with tyrants. And it's not just with Russia, but many other places in the world. So okay. it's not the problem. The problem is, first problem for any negotiations today, is that Russia doesn't want them. I don't believe that Russia wants any negotiations today. Why? Uh, Because they don't want to have any negotiations with Ukraine. They don't want to have any negotiations with Europe. They want to have negotiations with the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And they really think and believe that they're fighting against the United States, not against Ukraine. And for these, taking this into account, they have a problem because we don't know who will be U.S. president. Mm -hmm. And even after this, he will not be... He he thinks he can outweigh the West. He is advancing, unfortunately, not seriously, but a little bit. And, uh, yeah, and and, and even, like, take into account uh, that, uh, for example, even it was the Russian sociological polls, I think it was January 2022, Putin's uh, rating as a candidate to president, I think was near 40%. After Immediately after the start of the war, he became 70 or 80. So Putin benefits from the war from many sides. Those who think that, oh, Russia is suffering from this war. Yeah, Russian people are suffering from this war. They are dying, but Putin doesn't care. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care at all about this. And, and majority of Russian people too. Part of Russian society is suffering, others don't care, and uh, Putin doesn't care. So he doesn't want negotiations at all, he wants complete victory. But theoretically it can be negotiations, but only with the United States, where he, ca- he doesn't have a possible potential counterpart. I've been thinking that um, Putin has been sending different signals through different actors about negotiations. And first of those, uh, which I noticed, was when he visited Beijing this year and he gave this interview to Xinhua, to the Chinese news agency, where he said that uh, we are ready for negotiations and uh, we would like to see China as a potential intermediary. I've been thinking that perhaps Putin, in his mind, he admits the situation, admits that the Russian armed forces are um, exhausted, 
basically. So that's why he's trying to send different messages through China. And now when they are keep talking about Istanbul, uh, Istanbul um, agreements uh, that happened in 2022, I'd be thinking that perhaps this is sort of the messages that he He's, he wants to, to send to Ukraine that we, he's, he's considering negotiations, which we cannot perhaps call um, real feasible negotiations because Russia uh, perhaps will not be ready to communicate. It is not ready to communicate, but it is only ready to blackmail, basically. But still, I've been thinking that maybe the situation on the front lines are that bad for the, for the Russian armed forces that Putin is trying to send different messages with different actors. I would happy I would be happy if the situation if we could say that Russian army is completely exhausted and so on. I think it's uh, it's not. I want us to be very realistic because we heard a lot in 2022 Russia has just missiles for several more missile attacks. Uh, Russian army is collapsing, uh, they will not survive one year more of war, next summer we will be in Crimea, we heard a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They did not happen, and because I don't think we need to count the force of country mm -hmm. by number of tanks they have. Because I think Russian army is now stronger than it was in February 2022 before invasion, because of the huge experience mm -hmm. they obtained. The main thing is experience. There are three armies in the world now who know, which know what is the modern warfare. It's Russian, Ukrainian, and United States. That's all. No Chinese army, not. No. Israeli army, we heard a lot about Israel army, that it's so strong. And then we saw mm -hmm. uh, what had happened. And I can tell you, when I saw these columns of Israeli tanks uh, in Ukraine, they would be destroyed in minutes by mm -hmm. FPV drones, for example. So we have completely different war now. And in this war, it's not about number of tanks. Yeah, it's absolutely. about uh, other things. So Russian army is stronger than it was, and, more, and Russia is more dangerous than it was. Ukraine also is stronger than it was, much stronger, and that's good. Uh, but I think that Putin gave these messages in China and in other places just because he needs to give these messages mm -hmm. for the so-called global south. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to be the one, he started the war. He can do whatever messages he can give, but for the whole world, everybody knows he started the war. Uh, um, so now he tries to just, you know, to try to fool the people and just, just to try to make them to forget who started the war by saying, Russia, Russia, we want, we want peace. Mm -hmm. And it's, by the way, it's old uh, Russian Empire style. In, in Soviet Union, I'm old enough to remember a little bit Soviet Union, and it was all the time, we want peace, peace, peace. But that was the most aggressive country. So, Russia doesn't want, a, doesn't want peace, but Russia needs to give these messages to, to uh, prevent complete diplomatic isolation. Mm -hmm. And they're fighting for these global South countries and quite successfully. So this is, this is, why, this is why Putin gives these messages from my point of view.